Yes, yes, Prasod. Can we start? Oh, we can start, Darun. Yes, yes. So, uh, uh, dear all, I welcome you all for this uh, webinar on the uh, rubber model product. So, today's we uh, we have a resource person, Mr. Prashotam Ram. So he is actually one of the uh, uh, alumni in our uh, department of urban plastic technology. So on, I, I would like to welcome Mr. Prasotham Ram on behalf of uh, uh, the uh, uh, urban plastic technology and uh, on my behalf. Uh, uh, so he, I, I would like to introduce uh, about the speaker today. So he, is, uh, uh, he did uh, the mechanical engineering and he did MTech in uh, urban technology here in the department. And after that, he worked as rubber technology in the uh, uh, NPD department for in the synthetic rubber and product Bangalore around three to four years. And he has experience in uh, Gross International in the uh, R&D department as a production engineer around two years. And he works as uh, the plant head in the Goyatri Industries. Uh, uh, in Hyderabad around uh, two years and uh, now he is working as uh, deputy manager uh, uh, production in the JK Fenner India Limited Hyderabad for the uh, uh, past two years. So uh, uh, with the uh, vast knowledge about the uh, uh, rubber uh, products and the uh, 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 the uh, molded rubber products so I think uh, the uh, Prashadam Ram can explain about the uh, manufacturing processes and the application of the rubber molded products with, uh, with this seminar. So I think uh, we can hand over the session to uh, Mr. Prasvatham Ram. So now the session is uh, yours, Prasvatham Ram. We can hand Thanks for the introduction, Mr. Arun. Is my screen is visible to all? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Mr. Arun is my classmate. He given me already brief introduction about me. I um, hope that information is sufficient. We can go towards the presentation. Now I am going to give you some brief description, detailed idea about the molded rubber products. We might be studied in our college through several books. It may taught some kind of products. We have some basic knowledge of rubber products and what the process in our syllabus. But in this seminar, what I'm going to share you is the knowledge which I earned for the last eight years in the industry, how our rubber products plays a key vital role in our daily life and what kind of value we are going to add in the products in rubber field. This knowledge I'm going to share. <coughs> we everyone know that rubber is being an integral part in the essential element in our daily part of our life. It adding more values in our every stage of life. I will explain you in the future slides one by one. In this slide, you can be able to see some different types of molded rubber products. You can see this is a typical hose, this is bellow, this is grommet, this is some gasket, some customized grommets, some bushes, this is washers. So rubber can rubber generally will be classified into two different. One is natural as well as synthetic. Synthetic is further classified into different kinds of rubbers, depend upon the chemical nature, chemical structures. So we can be able to make any kind of product and we can classify it as A grade, B grade, C grade kind of products. If the quality is premium, we can call, call it in industry as a A grade. If it is medium quality, we can call it as a B grade. If it is going to 
lower grade which is not critical application we will call it as a c grade here you can see that all kind of products which is present we can able to make any kind of rubber into any kind of shape any kind of form any kind of color so that kind of versatility is available with the rubber products we can able to make any kind of shape we can able to make any kind of application next to that you can see this is a typical molding process here you can able to see some list of uh, line of machinery which is placed one by one which is near to the so before we are going to molding process we should make rubber compound which is we will make through the mixing process the rubber compound can be made through different types of process say it may be we can make through two roll mill or it may be kneader it may be a banbury it may be intermixer it may be tandem mixer like the different kinds of forms we can able to make after making the compound the compound will be passed to laboratory for general basic testings say rio meter rio muni hardness specific gravity like this basic kind of testings will be done in laboratory then they will approve the rubber compound once the rubber compound is being approved in the laboratory the compound will be passed to the next stage say blank formation in the blank formation so depend upon the product they will cut the rubber compound they will make the rubber compound into different different shapes different different sizes they may convert into a sheet form or strip form or blank form or round profile form any kind of form depend upon the product they will customizely they will make that once they make that compound they will pass it for molding process so in this process you can able to see this person we will make rubber compound he will cut into small small sheet he will load this into the dies here in this compression molding machine you are what you seeing is a vacuum compression molding machine in this compression molding machine we will load one die we will apply some particular pressure particular temperature and we will give some specific period of time for to cure the rubber compound so during this molding process we are converting the plastic state of rubber compound into elastic state of rubber components so once this particular time interval has been completed he will open the mold he will take out the product he will send it for next process so next process will carry on we will deflash the rubber components then we will pass to the next inspection stage so next after inspection it will go to the dimension checking further to that it will go to packing and dispatch to the customer <coughs> i already initially told that we are not, we are not seeing rubber only as a just a product rubber is being integrated integrally and emotionally attached with in our human life in our day to day life i will explain you by telling emotional word you may have a question that how rubber products creating emotions feeling in our daily life i will explain you that let us we will start our rubber journey in our life from our childhood onwards say when a baby is born after we can see a baby which is drinking milk through a feeding bottle so this here the first product which is being used by the baby is the rubber nipple so next to the mother the only product which creates resembles the mother feeling is the only rubber products there is no other product in still find in the world which will replace this so we are being a customer utilizer for the rubber component still starting from our childhood after some days the child is being grown and attaining some age say 6 to 7 months then the teeth will start to grow in the for babies but that time they will feel some pain for in their mouth for to make the pain relief our rubber products being act as a rubber teeth or which will give on some soothing effect for their mouth it will help us to grow their teeth again further the small baby again growing and reaching some 3 4 years so we will all know that the child childhood poses will love more cartoons so those kinds of cartoons by seeing in any one product they will get more interaction and attraction towards the product say example you can see a small rubber chappal shoes here 
in this one some cotton character will be here by seeing this the interaction towards the products and the creativity for the children's and interest will be more creating for the children's next to that after some times we may be having some previous childhood experience to use this kinds of rubber slings so <clears throat> not only this even if you see not only this rubber products even we are using based scrap rubber products has been being converted into a gardening decoration product to make happiness for the kids next to that you can see here some rubber toys this is not only a toys we not supposed to see only it as a rubber toys why means by seeing this kind of products the creativity level of kids has been increased by seeing the different different colors different different shapes by seeing the cartoons and playing with these kinds of toys the iq level of children the knowledge will be grown like anything so such kind of creativity will be improved through our rubber products next to that in our daily life what are the products if you are using means after we wake up daily we used to do brush the polymer products is the first product after we wake up using the first product is our polymer product only you can see a silicon based grip here as well as behind this brush we can able to see some tongue cleaner that is also being made of rubber gripper next to the after we completing our routine work we are going to bed for relaxation is there any product to help in from rubber yes of course we are our rubber products even help to relieve the pain relieve the stress from for the human beings through our latex foams this is not only for relaxation it is also being act as a suggested by some uh, uh, nerve ortho doctors nerves uh, nerve uh, from ortho specialists suggesting for to relieve their pain some spine problem person or suggested mm -hmm. to use this kinds of natural latex foam for to reduce their pains so next to that not only that even if you want to spend our valuable time with our relatives with friends means we need some time and space and to sit down chat with them we need some furniture for that even this kind of furniture is being made with the old scrap rubber products it has been being converted to a useful furnitures next to that whether it is application ending there itself no still we are playing a <coughs> key role in different different fields say fashion technology i already told that children up to here what they using after that the same children are growing and reaching some 18 to 20 ages at that age they will interest more towards the fashion they try to show more in interest in fashion and try to attract each other try to attract more people through their fashionable things and ornaments this is any product which is useful from rubber to make such kind of products yes you can see latex dresses this is not familiar not maximum in india but you can see this kind of culture in western culture they utilizing the latex products for to make such kind of costumes so our products even is useful very useful in fashion technology also next to that not only that our rubber product helping that even it our product has been useful for controlling the population of control population control also for to stabilize the population control our products polymer products are being a valuable product in that next to the after we reaching some particular age means we will definitely go to hospitalization even if we are getting hit any met any accident means we will go to hospitalization even when our old age time we will go to hospital in this area also our products are has been utilized very wide area say example sample collector sterilization product or being made with a rubber only next to the starting from stethoscope then if a person is suffering with some other disease say some urinary infection they are not able to excrete their urines our catheter will be useful for that next to the if someone person not able to move from the bed due to some sick or illness our product this bed pan is made of rubber which has been used for to make them make their bed clean so the person who is doing service for them also not feel very bad so this product is being useful for all these kind of applications so next to that 
it's not only ending there you can see that starting from our birth up to our death we might be gone through several kind of documentations all these documentations are valid only if there is a rubber stamp and seal in the rubber stamp seal is there so we are our rubber products pay, play a key roles even in that too next to the accessories not a, you can see that even if your laptop back side if you see some small kind of accessories will be present in there for to avoid scratches and to make through some heat dissipation through this portal by providing a small rubber strap here so it will make the bottom of the laptop little bit high so the heat will easily dissipate through this area next to that if you want to expose our love or friendship to anyone our rubber products are useful for that too to express our feelings and emotion to someone next to that if you going for any for example uh, ladies are going for purchase means they purchase they if you buying some costumes means their costume their purchase is not in until they finding some suitable band to match to their costume so this kind of accessories are being popular in rubber products we are not only the rubber products not only for human beings even our products are very helpful and support to animals also say this is a product which is made of rubber we are using this kind of toys for dogs and cats for to make them to happy not only this even for this cattle you can see such kind of rubber mats this rubber mats are being useful for the cattle for to make the place tidy and cleaning so this kind of rubber applications are there not only for human beings also for animals next to the how to we saw that advantages and applications of the rubber products here after we are going to see technically how rubber products are being made in industries how do you add value in the product i will explain you one by one in industry whenever we are going to start a product new product development we will start with the process of apqp which is briefly explained as advanced product quality planning whenever we receive a drawing from our customer say example one automobile manufacturer giving one rubber component to one rubber products manufacturer once the customer once our rubber product manufacturer receives the drawing they will do the apqp study for the particular product first of all what they will do they will plan and define the program what are the things to be done next to what they will do they will do the product design and development further to that they will after product design they will do the process design and development once the design part and development part is completed they will do validation of the both product and process whether it is meeting or not once this product and process validation has been completed then they will go to the production stage so in this production stage if the component is okay then they will send the products to the customer in every stage they will do the feedback access right in every stage if there is something is going unexpectedly means they will do the review system they will get the feedback from process by process then they will do the assessment how take action how to correct that then they will after correction of the item the next process will be carry forward i will explain in further detail in that with the example let me explain you all this process through a simple product say o-ring o-ring is a simple product you might be aware of that o-ring this product is being used as a sealing in different kind of application say hydraulic application pneumatic application sensor applications etc etc if you are not doing any proper planning means it may finally the product fail means it will end in a very big catastrophe you might be all know about that one of the rocket shuttle has been shattered in space due to the failure of o-ring so that much problem will happen if you not take any prior action prior planning so how as a rubber technologist we have to add value to the rubber products i will explain you as i already told that apqp is 
coming under with five different phases. Once we receive the drawing from customer, we have to make the product planning and quality program definition has to be defined at the initial stage. After to that, we have to make the product design and development. Once the product and design development has been developed, we have to go for the process design. After that, we have to go for validation of the product and process. Once it is completed, the production launch will happen, assessment will be done, and improvement will be taken further to that. Say example, here I am putting on typical uh, template of the APQP format. So this APQP will be advanced product quality planning will be conducted by the CFT members. CFT is nothing but cross-functional team members. Cross-functional team members means one person from rubber technologies, one person from quality, one person from production. Like that from each and every department, one person will come. They will study all this requirement for the particular product. They will study the drawing, what are requirements need for the product. They will do entire validation. Let me explain. So this is one typical drawing of the o-ring this do is mentioning the id inner diameter of the o-ring next to that they made some cross section the cut section they showing here so this is the thickness of the o-ring so which is exaggerated here so this is the thickness of the o-ring here they given the flash limit how much should be in width how much should be in thickness so i already shown you this is one of the black o-ring we are getting this kind of o-ring along with this drawing what you will receive we will receive the technical specification. We will receive the technical specification, say, what should be the rubber, what should be the polymer, it may be nitrile, it may be EPDM, it may be neoprene, depend upon the customer requirement, we have to make that. Next to that, what is the hardness requirement for that, we have to see. What is the color requirement for that, we have to see. Next, what is the proper physical properties, say tensile, what is the elongation, what is the aging, what is the cold retraction. So all this property we have to study very deeply. Other than that, some other additional requirements may be given by customer. Say example, your product has to meet the ROHS compliance, REACH compliance, then European norms, then NFS, NSF standards like that. They give some terms and conditions they will give to that. So we have to go through everything step by step. I will explain all this process through this sheet one by one. For example, I am just receiving this drawing. Once I receive this drawing, I have to see what is the material requirement. What is the use of any new material, whether they, which material they mention in the drawing, I have to go through. Say example, if the drawing is mentioning NBR, nitrile, means already I'm using the nitrile. So I have to make tick mark. So what I have to make for the action required. If I'm not having that NBR means I have to plan for that NBR compound. If I'm already having means I have to mention, prepare the so-and-so compound. NBR 70-75, nitrile 70-75 compound, make 1 kg trial batch for the so-and-so order. Like that, I have to make mention here. Then who is responsible for that? The mixing mill person should be responsible next to the quality person has to ensure whether the material is make correct or not. So the responsible person also should be allocated while we making this APQP time plan. Then due date, when the we require the compound, the date has to also be, has to be clearly planned. Once the compound pot has been over, next it will go to the special tooling. Special tooling is nothing but whatever the product I am going to make, I need one particular die. I will show you in photo. So this is one particular die photo. If I am keeping the rubber compound here means, then I am pressing, applying some pressure on temperature, uh, giving some temperature, say 180 degrees Celsius or 170 degrees Celsius and applying some 150 kg pressure and giving some time period of two minutes time means after completing the curing cycle, I will get a product like this. So this is, we will call it as tool or die or mold like this, different, different terms we will call. So while I'm choosing this tool, come to this, while I'm choosing the special tooling, whether we having the existing tool, for example, our customer is asking 120 mm inner diameter, 2 mm thickness o-ring. Whether I'm already having the die or not, I have to check. If I'm already having, yes, availability means I have to tick. Then I have to give the command that I have to use so-and-so die, already existing die. Like that, I have to give a command. 
then post and respond to the production person has to be responsible for that we have to write that production person has to be responsible for that we have to write the due date when i am going to take the sample i have to write the tooling date for example if i don't have that particular die size if the die is the size is new for me means i have to make the new die for that for that what i have to do i have to study the rubber for example they given me uh, silicon compound o-ring they asking the silicon compound o-ring with the hardness of 30 35 or 40 45 some hardness will be mentioned by the customer so for the die what is requirement for the die i should given clearly for example if i make if i want 50 mm diameter means i have to keep some more dimension additional dimension i have to give in the die why means whenever we taking the component from the die means the rubber product will start to shrink if it is start to shrink means the dimension what i am taking from the die will not be the same in the rubber product so what it will happen it will start to shrink so this shrinkage should be considered while i am making the tooling part so the tooling part should be clear not only that dimension as also we have to ensure that the air vent should be clearly given and the die or not has to be ensured those kind of checklist have to be make separately what are the parameters should be checked in the tooling part the separate checklist has to be shared with the tool maker has to be verified one by one once everything is getting approved we have to give approval to the tool maker to make the tool next to that addition to that what is there any new technology or process required for the product which customer asking from us we have to study for example customer is asking o-ring with molybdenum coat say molybdenum disulfide coating so i just made the o-ring after making o-ring if i have to make some extra material coating means whether i have to go for any additional process is there any machines or process i have to make extra means i have to study that they can i have to study the material then i have to study the i have to procure the machine which is required to make the product i should ensure for that next to that these two points mingled together has assembly build variation analysis been considered has design of experiments been considered for example we just to making simple o-ring and giving to customer then customer will do the analysis of our o-ring and they will fix in their assembly then they will do the design of experiment whether our product is meeting as per the requirement or not they will do validation and let us know accordingly we have they will give feedback to us then accordingly we have to take further corrective action in that next to that before we are making any bulk requirement for example a customer is asking some particular o-ring for 10000 quantity or 50000 quantity it having some critical profile means i have to study i have to first to make one prototype tool prototype tool is nothing but i have to make one single cavity first instead of going mass production 100 cavities in a single day for example i am telling you this die is having four cavity okay if customer order is more i am not able to make this production of the 10000 quantity with this four cavities i have to have more number of cavities it should have 100 numbers 200 numbers should be there so in order to meet that we should know what is the requirement of the customer how much quantity they asking all things should be we have to analyze the after the before that some any criticality availability in the product means any critical shape available in the product means i have to make only single cavity small die with single cavity i have to make prototype i have to make i have to study the entire product dimension i have to see i have to see aesthetics i have to see any other problem is there in the product or not i have to check it out if everything is fine the single cavity then i have to go for the multiple cavity if any problem minor corrections are there then we have to give input to the our tool maker die maker for to make the correction in the four coming dies next to that this is being done next to that as a dfma been completed dfma is nothing but design failure effective mode analysis there are two fmas are available in the standards one is design fma another is process fma this design fma will be maximum carried out by 
the oem original equipment manufacturer original equipment manufacturer is nothing but the person who is making the end product or he making any equipment he will always do design failure mode effective analysis i will briefly explain in two three lines what is dfem here for example i am going to make one scooter i have to i have to write all the process which are involved in the making the scooter i have to write what are the sub steps which is coming in the scooter while manufacturing so if any one process is going wrong how it will affect to the next process how it will affect to the end customer has to be validated in failure mode effective analysis stage we will analyze so based on that severity problem they will give the ranking they will give the severity to the particular process so if the problem is huge the ranking will be high they will give ranking from 1 to 10 if the severity is the more problem they will give high more marks 10 9 8 like this category will go next to that severity how much times the problem will keep on repeating say they will call it as occurrence how many times the problem is repeating whether it is rarely occurring or it is continuously occurring and they will find out if the occurrence is more the number rankings will be more 10 9 8 like that they will give next to that the problem is that then it is happening more then how we will detect that problem detection method should be strong if the detection method is strong means they will give ranking as 1 if the detection is weak they will give ranking as 10 so this three numbers severity occurrence detection these three numbers will be multiplied then we will get an answer that answer is nothing but rpn they will call it as risk priority number based on the risk priority number the company will take action if any problem is occurring what kind of action should be initiated what kind of corrective action should be initiated those kind of initiation should be taken they will try to reduce the occurrence how to control the problem without occurring how to improve their detection system that things will be analyzed in the dfma part so once this dfma completed next to that they will go to the dfma part dfma is nothing but manufacturability and assembly while manufacturing what are the challenges will come as while assembly the rubber products what are the challenges will come those things will be validated by the customer and they will do validation and process validation will be done for that next to that this is not applicable maximum for the rubber company why because have service and maintenance issue been create considered for example we are manufacturing belts and giving to grinder manufacturer so the grinder manufacturer he is a oem original equipment manufacturer he will monitor his product in with his customer where how his product is giving service and how frequently it needs maintenance to make it correct those kinds of study will be done made by the oem persons next to that as the design verification plan been considered so once the design part is been completed it has to be verified by the cft members cft i already explained you that cross functional team members have to be verified they have to verify whatever the design has been already made everything has been correctly made or not they will validate with the cft if any finding is there they will try to correct it next to the coming to testing part i already told you that if we resume in the drawing means we will get some testing specific parameters which should be mentioned in the drawing after seeing the drawing we should make a checklist that what are the tests are needed whether it has to be done internally or externally or enable upgrade to lab requirement is there or product validation need or not has to be analyzed we have to make on checklist according to the checklist we have to make all these tests we have to make on final report then we have to sub- submit to our customer say example ten cell stent compression set then gold retraction test aging parameter will be given by customer those things we have to do validation then sometimes if it is coming and being a metal part means uh, they will ask to conduct some salt spray test such kind of test will be suggested by the customer those things we have to initially plan and how frequently we have to make that also has to be captured in initial stage itself next to that by seeing the drawing <coughs> we have to find is there any special characteristics has been select or not selected for example in this boring you can see that we can see two dimensions one is inter id inner diameter 
another is this w w is nothing but thickness of the wiring this is inner diameter out of this two dimension which is critical to customer so that is nothing but special character then material point if hardness is being a special character it also has to be highlighted so those things should be highlighted have a special character is being selected we have to highlight we have to hand over this data to the quality and production uh, production pe peoples so while the time of production the quality and production team has to ensure whether the special character is is being met or not they will do validation next to that is bill of material complete for to make that wiring what are the materials required for say example compound dye machine feasibility is available or not everything will be made and it will be time plan will be made accordingly next to the here what i said the special character same thing in repeating or special character is properly documented or not so whatever things which we are identifying special characteristics everything has to be properly documented it should be handed over to the next department for the future reference verification next to that so what i explain this is one of the wiring once we receive the drawing from customer we have to validate what is the material whether it is a new material for us whether it is old material for us even if it is a new existing material means is the specification is different or not for example some customers will give some stringent specification say compression set they may ask for less than 5% on product itself they will ask they will not ask for buttons some persons will ask for directly check the compression set on the products we have to we need expecting 10% of the compression set directly on the wiring so such kind of specific character will be mentioned those things has to be validated and studied initially itself next to that what should our product meet as per the customer expectation so product how it is going to field validation everything has to be initially validated why why means <coughs> if you are not seeing the specification if you are not able to make the product as per the specification means at a field failure may happen easily for that only we have to ensure the specification which is given in the drawing has to meet initial itself here we have mentioned the tensile test then compression set then hardness testing so small tests i just mentioned not only this is i'm um, just is a typical example more tests are there has to be validated initial stage itself next to that this maximum product design will be given by the customer itself we have to ensure that our product is able to meet their specification or not next to that process design as i already told you that we will make the rubber compound after making the rubber compound it will be converted into a particular blank profile form after making the blank profile form we will keep it inside the mold then we will apply the pressure then we will apply the pressure here this mold and platen will be in particular temperature say 162 180 degrees celsius it will be available then we will apply 150 200 kg pressure depend upon the rubber shape hardness then we will give some particular time period once the pressure is applied the rubber compound will get filled into the cavity it will form the shape as per our expectation so finally you will get a product rubber product like this next to that we made all this product we designed the we conducted the rubber compound validation part over we made the dye we made the samples we made the samples next to the what we have to do we have to validate this dimension we have to validate all this dimension is meeting or not what are the characters which is given by customer meeting or not we got to see so coming to the next we have to give the product along with that we have to give some document to customer so without document customer definitely don't accept our product why because we should ensure that we are able we are having a capability to make your product as per your requirement so this will be validated through the ppap process ppap is nothing but production part approval process so this production part approval process is nothing but it will have a set of heating documents say example customer is giving drawing to us after receiving customer drawing we have to study the drawing we have to study make the process flow diagram we have to make the define the process what is the process for that then we have to make that 
FME, failure mode effective analysis study. After we doing the FME study, we have to make the control plan. If something goes wrong, how I'm going to control the process. After uh, making control plan, I have to study the dimension of the product. Then I have to do study the raw material study. Then I have to validate the rubber compound. Then I have to study dimension. Then after that, I have to make the SPC, statistic process control study for the process. How I am capable to meet the customer requirement dimensions and able to give consistently to the customer. It will be assured through SPC study. This report also I have to submit to customer. Next to that, I have to give MSA study. MSA study is nothing but measurement system analysis, which is nothing but how our measuring systems are capable to measure the dimension which is mentioned in the drawing. We have to validate the equipment. Say example, we will use vernier caliper, we will use hardness durometer, we are using scales, we are using dial thickness gauge to check the rubber dimensions in different different aspects. Then persons also inspect visual inspectors, dimension inspectors, quality persons will be there. They will do the inspection, dimension for checking. So we have to validate this both. We have to ensure both equipments as well as measuring equipments as far as the person. Both are doing testing are capable to, to do the testing perfectly. So they will simply call it as GRR, gauge repeatability and reproducibility. So this report also we have to submit to the customer like the packing standard, then visual appearance support, like this kind of set of some documents will be, we have to make produce. We have to give sample to customer along with the some docu documents. So this PPAP, what I explained to you, it will be classified into different, different levels. So different level means, in this part one means, we can submit the sample to the customer. For example, I'm giving ORIN to customer along with part submission warrant. Part submission warrant is nothing but, um, I am making, whether it is a new product development or already existing product development, I'm doing any modification for that. Whether it is any engineering change in that, any material changes in that, I have to mention in the part submission warrant, how much quantity I can able to give to the customer and what time interval I can able to give, who is responsible for what, everything will be mentioned in the part submission warrant. So this part submission warrant along with the O-rings, along with the rubber products, I can able to give to customer. This document, two things are sufficient for customer. This level of, this is a high end level. So if we are in level one means, customer having very much confidence over us. If we are in level one and level two, why? Because here the number of documentation work is very, very less. By submitting two, three documents, customer will be happy with that. They will get our product along with the minimum documents. Next is the same thing you see here. PSW, part submission warrant with product samples under limited supporting documents. Minimum document is sufficient. I already explained there were several documents. Say example, um, process flow diagram, FME, control plan, then SPC, MSA, packing standard, visual appearance report, et cetera, et cetera. Like this will be there. So minimum documents when submit, customer will accept for that. Then level three, maximum rubber sector company will coming under this category. Only. They have to submit this level three document. Here, along with sample, we have to give 18 set of documents. Then only customer will get our product for validation at their end. If we not given the doc, any one of the document, they will not happy to get the product. They will not give approval for also. Next to that, we are coming to level four. Level four means we have to submit the sample along with the sample, we have to give the part submission warrant. Next to that, addition to that, any specific requirement will be mentioned by the customer. Say example, ROHS compliance has to meet, then any other reach compliance, then uh, NSF standard has to meet, any standards they'll give. Your product has to meet so-and-so specification standards like that they will tell. Those kinds of things we have to ensure it is able to meet. Next to that, level five. Level five, where it will happen means the customer, for example, if I'm going to make O-ring to Ola or two-wheeler TVS means the customer Ola or TVS directly come to our rubber premium, our company, then they will do all this study. What are the things which I mentioned above? All these 18 documents, they will come and make the documents by their hand. They will do all this validation at our company end, then they will give approval for that. After this submission, 
we produce the rubber products then we produce the documents ppap documents then we giving those things to our customer the customer what will do customer he will do all this testings whatever the products we given which is able to meet their requirements or not everything they will do dimension part then testing part along with sample initial ordering sample we have to submit certain kind of documents then certain test labs and buttons also we have to give it to the customer customer by seeing those things customer what will do he will do validation revalidation in their end they will also if requirement is that they will send it to the third party to get it done once everything is getting approved they will give some report to us say sample inspection report once this samp our only three kinds of process is possible the either customer will accept means they will give the green signal to go for further production if something deviation is there in their product in the product means they will they may agree they may not agree if there is not major problem means they will give some deviation they will write in the report it is accepted as this is not a major problem we can able to deviate from this particular requirement like they will mention and give the report to us we can go further proceed in that if it is major critical dimension deviation or major test failure means they will clearly reject our product then they will send to us so please correct and give the fresh sample we have to make the, we have to repeat the same process we got to make the product we have to make the document we have to submit to the customer as per the requirement so i completed my session if any question is there anyone can ask arun yes professor uh, i think is there any question uh, the students uh, there uh, you can uh, get clarification of your doubt regarding the uh, molded uh, rubber products so i think uh, uh, mr prashotham ram explained uh, in detail about the uh, Uh, molded rubber products, starting from uh, the applications, uh, uh, sequently starting from birth to death, and the uh, what all the uh, procedures followed there in the industry. So uh, they they were using the APQPU, uh, advanced product uh, quality planning, the uh, CFT team, there is cross functional team, and uh, the uh, uh, PAPP uh, production part uh, uh, approval. so 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 students can able to get explore explore the uh, industrial knowledge so uh, by having uh, the clarification of doubts with the uh, prashotham ram so uh, students you can uh, if you have any queries just you can ask uh, mr prashotham ram okay if you, anyone have doubt means you can uh, reach me through this number or you can contact me through my mail id or linkedin profile uh, mr prashottam ram actually i have one doubt so uh, yes. what are all the difficulties uh, will be faced in the industries uh, while doing this uh, while producing this mold rubber products difficulties yeah. what kind of difficulties you asking process difficulty or there is a material development no, difficulties what all the uh, kind of difficulties difficulties there just we can share with us difficulty means in you know, nobody's challenges are uh, raw material consistency availability is being a major challenge in the present industrial scenario why because means uh, as we are know that maximum we are importing the materials from uh, all over the world Uh, we don't have that much huge facilities rubber manufacturing companies are not here so the grade which is available consistently getting from the source is quite difficult this is one of the major challenges uh, not only the rubber part also carbon black also we are facing some uh, grade to grade challenges the consistency will be not be come up to the level so those kinds of things we will have to do some alteration for that if it is this is not what we have to do alternation for that those kind of things we have to do day, day by day we have to take some trial activities we have to keep it uh, contingency plan for that then only we can overcome that this is some uh, material supply point of view next to that uh, some i am telling now, nowadays uh, customers are getting more info, they are getting very knowledgeable 
they having and following and putting more stringent standards over the products in order to make their product more helpful to their end customer say example i told now initially the customer will ask test standard to be conducted in the slab and button but nowadays they directly asking some kind of testing should be directly conducted on the direct on the product so meeting the specification over some product is quite difficult so those kinds of equipments we have to procure we have to validate means um, we have to ready for that for the upgradation of technologies so this is one of the things so next to that uh, day by day you know that new new technologies are coming in every aspect of, say nowadays the trending is a uh, printing technology which is coming for plastics so some research i just studied some journals that some research is going on for rubber products also just going on so we have to adapt for the new kind of technology also for to get upgrade in that any other okay i have uh, one more question mr prashod uh, yes. since uh, you you have a uh, uh, new product development and uh, research and uh, uh, development department so yes. uh, so again uh, so for, for to develop a new product so without uh, any uh, print again uh, so how to initiate uh, that to produce a new product with the uh, model rubber product any kind of model rubber products in the uh, new product development so oh, i told now whenever we receive for example uh, our customer may be knowledgeable person he may share the drawing okay otherwise some persons don't know the application for example i'm telling uh, the person who is end user he don't know what what is rubber he don't have any drawing he may give and simply give one kind of application to us yeah. i need to seal my equipment yeah. i am requesting your support for that so we should update ourselves in order to make component to them for example so what kind of sealing fitment need for them what kind of tolerance we have to give to them we should know practically by seeing the end applications how the product will go on sit in the group or so what kind of tolerance how much thickness should be keep more for example you just take example i am just giving on wearing to make a fitment to for a particular groove yeah. we do i don't know whether the groove requirement thickness may be 10 mm or 11 mm or 12 mm yeah. so by having a strong knowledge over the how the rubber will compress how much i have to compress having this knowledge how much i have to give pressure over the rubber products means so the tolerance and thickness how much i have to give for the product i should know by giving particular suggestion to the customer he should feel happy for that so such kind of knowledge we have to learn through our experience okay thank you and is there any other questions from the uh, audience side yes i think uh, there is no question so uh, at this junction i would like to uh, thank sir uh, prashantham ram the deputy manager uh, in jk fena hyderabad for accepting our uh, invitation to uh, immediately to present uh, the webinar so since uh, uh, this is a very so uh, uh, on my behalf and uh, on behalf of the department of urban plastic technology i would like to thank uh, uh, mr prashantham ram for uh, for his uh, extended uh, time for the sh knowledge share with our students juniors so uh, so thank you prashantham ram thank you yeah. for your time i'm really really thankful to you arun and also i'm very thankful to my professors yes, yes thanks for the opportunity i am expecting more sessions in future also yes yes definitely i am also very eager to meet all of my Juniors. Juniors. Yes. 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 Actually, I uh -huh. I think you can come directly to the department and you can interact with your juniors always. Sure. Sure. Yes. Sure. I'm planning for that. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Probably I will. I'm planning in January to visit. Yes. So uh, uh, the officially the uh, webinar on molar rubber products can be find uh, uh, up. So uh, thank you all for attending the uh, webinar and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.